Well, hello, and welcome to our virtual classroom. Hopefully everybody made it through what has to be one of the strangest spring breaks on record, and you're doing okay and ready, or at least able, to get back to work for classes. I've been busy for the past week and a half, not only trying to put things together for this class, but also taking all of my high school courses online. So it's going to be a new situation, but we're going to try and make the best of it and see what we can do. I know a lot of you have questions about what's going to be up with things, and that's kind of the point of this video. We're going to try and let you know just what you need to do for the next month and a half and how things will work as we continue our class in a different format. The president of Iowa Lakes is still keeping some hope out that we might be back for the last couple weeks of the school year, but we're going to go forward assuming that we're going to be off for the rest of our time. And to make things work, that does mean, of course, that you will need internet access. But beyond that, pretty much everything we're going to do, you should be able to do with either a phone or a computer and submitting what you need to online. We'll talk about the details of that as we go along, but I'm going to try and keep things as user-friendly for you guys and for me, honestly, as we can. So the first thing we're going to talk about is notes and assignments. I know there's some classes where professors are switching to things like Zoom or Google Hangouts. I'm not planning to do anything of that sort in this class. Everything that we do will be linked from Canvas. I think all of you have access to Canvas, and that's about the easiest way to get in contact with you and to have you guys access the class. I'm planning to do most of the notes in exactly the format you're looking at right now, where it's a video created from a PowerPoint and posted on YouTube. Those will be linked from Canvas, or you can actually go and Google my name and YouTube, and you can find that and all of my high school videos as well. We're going to also continue to have PDFs stored on Canvas of all the notes, so you can read through them in detail if you want. The YouTube videos will be pretty much the same thing that I would have been presenting in class if we were there each week like we had been before. For assignments, I will be giving assignments each week. Some of those will be specific worksheets that I've created and others will be problems from the book. I know there's some people that had been sharing books and may not have access to a book now that you are at home. And because of that, I will plan on scanning the problems that I assign so those are available online as well and you can look at those. A few days after I posted those assignments, I will be posting answers to them and explanations of how you do everything so that you can compare and see how you're doing with everything. Now, just like before, the assignments won't count directly toward your grade, but I do suggest that you at least look at the problems so that you can make sure that you do know how to do everything. Of course, quizzes are one of the main things that goes into your grades, and that will continue to be true for the rest of the semester. I'm planning to do the quizzes through Google Forms, not directly through Canvas itself, but they will be linked through Google Forms, and you'll take all of the quizzes online. Because of the nature of how that works, they are essentially open book quizzes. You may use whatever notes or book you want to use when we go through those. And, of course, you will want to be able to use a calculator as well. The quizzes you can take on your own time, they'll be posted well before they're due. You do want to make sure that you get them done by the designated date. Our first quiz will be due a week from Thursday because I told you we wouldn't have one this week. And it'll probably be posted the end of this week. You can take it any time before next Thursday. I still haven't decided for sure what I'm going to do with the major tests. There's two more main tests that need to happen. And those most likely will also happen through Google Forms, but I'm still working to see if there's a better format we can use for those. 
They are likely, however, also to be online. And again, those are also likely to essentially be open book tests because they kind of have to be under this new setting. The other thing that goes into your grade is your project. And the project is still going to happen, though for a lot of you, it may require some changes from what you'd originally planned. You guys, of course, turned in a prospectus about a month ago that said what you wanted to do for your project. For some of you, that involves some sort of a survey that hasn't happened yet, or something you are planning to do at work, which may not be able to happen yet. If that was you, you want to think through and think, what can I do instead? I still have the project handout posted online. You can look at some of the ideas people have done in the past, and that might give you some ideas for plan B. I do still plan to have a progress report on your project due April 2nd. And what you're going to want to say on that is what, if any, changes you've made to what you plan on doing and what you expect to do to finish things up with that project. When it gets a little bit closer to that date, I'll go through in more detail exactly what you need to know. That's really just like a paragraph or so that you can like submit through Canvas, and that'll be the easiest way to do that. At the end of the semester, you will need to submit a summary of what you've done, and that'll include the results of a statistical test that you'll be doing. That's really the whole point of why you do the project. What I'm not going to have you do is the presentation that was originally scheduled at the end of the semester also. There's really not a good way to do that electronically, and so we're not going to. We're just going to do a written summary, and that'll be the end of the project and the final thing that goes into your grade. So you have an idea of where we're going as we held forward here. There's four main topics that we have left to do in class. We started talking about the idea of estimation before spring break. That was when I went through the idea of how they predict the winner of elections. We're going to be looking at a lot more with estimation and how you can estimate both averages and percentages. I actually already have the videos with notes for those online under the module for Chapter 7. That will be the first main thing we're going to be talking about as we go forward. After that, we'll learn about hypothesis testing, which is how you figure out whether a result is significant. It's one of the most important things that we do in statistics. We'll also talk about two variable statistics where you compare one sample with another. And you can see, for example, is an average for men different than an average for women? Do you have different answers in different groups? And finally, we'll talk about chi-square, which mostly is a way that you can analyze things that can either be divided up into categories or arranged in a table. And those are the main topics we'll be talking about. We'll also tie things together toward the end, talk about a few more ways that people misuse statistics, and I have a little bit of a presentation on what else is there, what's going to happen that you might not have encountered yet. We will go through all the rest of the topics that are covered in the, the main content of this class because different people will be going to different places from here, and we do want to make sure you're prepared for whatever happens next. But those will be the main places that we're going as we head forward from here. So just a few other things to point out to you. First off, whenever I add things into Canvas, new lectures or assignments or anything else that you should be aware of, I do plan to post announcements, which sends most of you an email so you're aware of new things that have been posted to Canvas with this class. If you have any reason that you want to contact me, please do. There are lots of ways that you can get in touch with me. You, of course, can contact me directly through Canvas. Several of you have for various reasons already, and that often is about the quickest way. You can also email me probably these days the 
best way to do that is to use my email at bishopgerrigan.org, which is given to you on the screen there. And if you have a short message, feel free just to shoot me a quick text at 515-341-3763. If you do send a text, you want to make sure you include your name since none of you are in my contacts and it sometimes can be weird if I'm trying to guess who sent a text. So, you know, if you do have questions about anything or if there's some special circumstances I need to know about, be sure to contact me and make me aware of what's going on with things. So hopefully that answers most of your questions and summarizes how we're going to do things going forward. I wish I could see you guys in person, but unfortunately that isn't possible under the circumstances. So I do wish you well, not just with this class, but with everything, and I hope that you do keep healthy and stay safe, and we'll make the best of things, and before you know it, we'll all have exciting stories we can tell to our children and grandchildren. Take care, everybody.